Hello everyone, this is Jeff Beavers. This is the Voice 5 ministry. We just invite you tonight to listen to God's Word. I just want to speak to you for a brief moment out of my heart as I've been contemplating over the week how wonderful Jesus is and who Jesus is and and what He has done for us. And I begin to realize and understand that Jesus as a man is really a package. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among men. So, Jesus being God, but also being a man, what God did was the Father took His very own words that come out of His mouth, from the beginning of time, every word that he ever spoke, because the Bible says that God's words are alive and powerful and quick and they never die. And God, the Father, took all those words that he had spoken and he contained them and wrapped them up and put them inside of a fleshly human being, his son, Jesus Christ. So... Picture as a Christmas time when we take a wonderful gift and we put it inside a box and, and we put wrapping paper around it and we make it beautiful and pretty and present it as a gift, a package. So I want to talk just for a second about Jesus, the total package. And Jesus, many times when he would see somebody or encounter them, when Zacchaeus climbed up a tree to see Jesus, he looked up and Jesus said to him, Salvation has come to your house today. And many times he would say that to people. And when he would pray for them or, or whatever their need was, he would say the word, salvation has come. And King David in the Old Testament, many times he would refer to, he, he would say, the Lord is my refuge. He is my strength. He is my shield and buckler. He is my defense. And shields and bucklers were weapons that were, one was used as a defensive mechanism. It was bigger, and it was used to block swords and spears. But a buckler was a little small shield that strapped right to your wrist, about that big. And it could be used to not only block a sword, but it could also be used as a weapon to take somebody's head off. A lot of times they would have points as they were made out of metal and leather, they would have points on them, so they were a very lethal hand-to-hand, -hand. they were for hand-to-hand -hand close combat is what they were for. And David said, the Lord is my shield and my buckler. He's my defense, but he's also my offensive weapon to take out my enemy when one would come against me. He also said, the Lord is the light of my salvation. And David used the word probably salvation more than any other writer in the Bible. And I wanted to talk tonight about the total package Jesus being our salvation. And as I looked up the word salvation in the original Greek and Hebrew, and the definitions that I begin to read begin to really open up some of the scriptures I've read in my lifetime and begin to bring a whole new understanding to those scriptures and as Jesus called himself he said I am the doorway to the Father no man can come to it, the Father except through me and Jesus refers to himself as this door and as a door a physical door is used either to go into a room or come out of a room the door never changes and it never moves it stays the same Jesus said you know, I am the same. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, forever. He never changes. But the, what we do, we need Jesus sometimes to be a defense. Sometimes we need him to be a way of escape. The Bible says that with every temptation, God makes a way of escape. Now in the Greek, it reads, with every temptation, God has a door of escape. And that door is Jesus Christ. So that door will either open up into a new opportunity, a new blessing, as you walk into it, 
or a door will open and cause you to leave a circumstance that you're in right now, maybe of sickness or poverty, or you're trapped in sin or addiction and can't get out of it. Jesus said he is the way out of something dark, and he is the way into something that is full of light. And there's no other way to get to that except through him. So, he is the total package. And the word salvation tonight is a group word. And we, many times, we talk about when someone comes to the altar at church, we say they got saved, they received salvation, and we don't have a clue what that word means. We think it means that their sins were forgiven and they got saved. That's just part of it. It's just part of it. The word salvation, the whole definition of it, means a defense. It means a protector. It means a deliverer. It means a refuge. See, David knew that. He, he said, the Lord is my deliverer, and him I will trust. He is my refuge, and he is my defense. Think about that. David knew that about Jesus over about a thousand years before Jesus was born. And he wrote these wonderful things about him. He said, the Lord is all of these things to me. He's the total package. Whatever I need, that is who the Lord is. Salvation. So in the New Testament, when we see Jesus now as our salvation, he is saying, I am your deliverer, your way out. And another thing it says is total health. Salvation means health. You cannot, salvation means prosperity. You cannot take and pull that out of salvation and say, well, that part ain't for today. You, how are you going to rip out part of who Jesus is, his very nature? It, you, how, how can you do that? You can't. Many people, they've decided, okay, I don't believe it. Well, Jesus said your traditions will cause the Word of God to be of no effect in your life. So you can choose not to believe in healing or prosperity, not to believe that God loves you. You can choose to believe that. And you will not walk in the totem of who Jesus is. You only walk in a part of Him. But the Lord wants us to walk, as the Word says, walk on this earth as Jesus walked. Which means, even the Apostle Paul said, walk in the fullness of the grace and the power and the knowledge and the ability of Jesus Christ himself. What a statement. So when we use that door, Jesus said that he can open doors that no man can shut, and he can shut doors that no man can open. When Jesus is shutting a door in your life, he is protecting you. He is cutting off an enemy. When he's opening a door, he is allowing access to something new and great in your life. And he said, my father is doing that. And he said, and when he does it, it can't be reversed. No man can reverse it. And many of us today, we, we give man too much power and credit in thinking that they can reverse something that God has done in our life. But the word, what Jesus himself said, no man can reverse it unless you choose to believe that they can. And then the word is of no effect and man will come in and mess your whole life up for you. But you believe that the Father is in control of every door that's in your life. And if he shuts it or opens it, no man's going to reverse his decision in your life. Salvation, the total package. It is so powerful that the Word says when you become born again and when you get saved and give your life to Jesus, it says immediately that old things are passed away. That means they are dead and gone. And all things in your life from that point on become new. Notice it said all things. That means when you get saved and you give your life to Jesus, if you're smoking crack, crack leaves, and you are no longer a crack addict. Can it be that easy? Yes, it can, and it is. That means if you go to the altar and give your life to Jesus, 
Now this is powerful. And you are sick. And old things pass away. When you stand up from that altar, guess what? And all things become new. Should you not receive a new body part? What I like is you may be listening and have an old physical heart. Your heart may be wore out. It may be sick. But when you got saved, it says all things became new. Start taking that scripture and quoting it and saying, Lord, I thank you. When I got saved, I got a new heart. Not only a spiritual heart, but I got a new physical heart. Or whatever element you have or whatever organ you may need, you may need a new liver. You can take that same scripture. I thank you, Lord. I got saved. And the Bible says, I've got all things new, which means I've got a new liver for today. That's how powerful that scripture is. And that's a revelation for all of us today to begin to walk in. Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it abundantly. And we want to suffocate that life and we want to take the abundantly out of that scripture and we want to paraphrase Jesus and say, I've come that you might have get by and that you may have something good every now and then happen to you. But he, he didn't say that. He set the boundaries. And the boundaries that Jesus set, he said the thief only comes for three reasons. To kill, to steal, and to destroy. If that's happening to you today, that's the devil. According to the word's definition, that's the devil working in you. Nobody else. It's not God. God's not killing your kids. God's not taking your home away from you. God's not doing That's the devil's job. To kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and to have it more abundantly. And it's a continuous thing. It's not just a one-time deal and you're done. The Greek has a verb there that means continuously having life and having it abundantly. That means our God is an abundant, exuberant, over-embellished, over-the-top. He never does anything small. He created a whole universe that the scientists cannot even begin to find an end to just so he can put one planet Earth in the middle of it and on that one planet put us there. Now what's all the rest of it for? <laughs> God is so abundant and so lavish when he built the city in heaven. He didn't use just one foundation like men do down here. He used 12 foundations. Why so many? Why, why, why go overboard with that? What's he got in mind when, when he begins to think about abundant life? What does Jesus have in mind for you? And what does abundant life mean to you today? Does it mean barely getting by? Does it mean being sad and depressed all the time? Or is abundant life meaning enjoying life. The Bible says, it's very clear, Jesus, Jesus even said, he said, in this life you're going to have tribulation. And everybody would go, oh, woe is me. Oh, help me. And Jesus says something, being the total package, he says one of the craziest things in the world. He said, but be real happy. Because I've overcome the world. Now what he's saying, he didn't say be happy because you're sick and then you're in tribulation. And he didn't say to stay there. What he said was, be happy because I have overcome the world. Now, we got to pull another scripture in there. we got to understand what Jesus is saying in order for us to be happy. Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave. Jesus destroyed Satan and made an open show of him. Jesus has already destroyed the gates of hell. Hell cannot do anything against the church. That's what he said. So that's why he's telling you, Jesus said, if you live inside me and I live inside of you and my words are inside of you, you can ask anything you will and it'll be done. That's what he's trying to tell you. Get happy about being in Jesus. 
And when you're in Him, you are defended, you are powerful, you have everything you need, you have abundance of everything that heaven has to offer. And your prayer is, Father, I thank you. As Jesus taught us to pray, as we close, He said, pray like this. Father, let heaven come down to earth. Whatever is up in heaven, right? This is radical teaching. Whatever is in heaven right now. In his authority and name, I call it down to earth. That's what he said to pray. Let your will be done. And his will, John says, is for you to prosper and to be in health as your soul prospers. I don't know God's will. Yes, you do. It's in His Word. Yes. And He said, you've got the power. As long as you don't say anything, nothing's ever going to happen. But He said, you've got the power to call heaven to earth. The kingdom of God rests inside of you. Call heaven to earth. See, there's no lack in heaven. In heaven, God uses gold as asphalt for streets. In heaven, there is no sadness, there is no sickness, there is no depression. But, Jeff, if we lived in abundance and we lived in happiness here on earth, what would we do with ourselves? I like being sad. I like, I like, you know, that's our mindset right now. The devil has convinced us that we cannot have heaven on earth, but Jesus said you can, but you've got to call it down. You've got to speak it. You gotta believe it and you gotta know God's will for your life. And he said, Be of good cheer. He said, You'll speak these things, and the devil may come and try to do his business and mess your life up and do all this. But he said, Be happy in me because you have the authority in my name to speak to these things. You may go through a season of a storm. You may go, he tells you you will. He promised you you're gonna go through a season. But he said, be of good cheer, I've overcome and made you more than a conqueror. Okay? Proper doctrine is not that if you've got faith, nothing bad's ever going to happen to you. That's not true. It's also not true that you're the devil's chew toy and he's going to every day mess your life up. If he's doing that, you need to go find some power. You need to go find a prayer closet and not come out of there until you were like Jesus in the desert when he used three little scriptures on the devil. And the Bible says the devil had to go leave him alone for a whole season. He wore his head out with three little scriptures. Okay? So, don't fall for all of these false doctrines. If something comes in, the devil comes in. He's just doing his job. Okay, so don't get bent out of shape about what the devil's doing in your life. Get really turned on and happy about what Jesus has already given you. He told you, get happy. I've overcome the world. Live in me now. Live in my kingdom. Speak my word. Believe that heaven is coming to earth. Call it down. Whatever you need, whatever sickness is in your body, whatever organ needs to be replaced, God's got new organs just hanging up in heaven waiting for you to speak and call it down. Call down a new heart, a new pancreas, a new set of eyes. Call it forth. New joints. If you need them, he's got plenty of new joints up there. And watch your tongue. Do not, I have seen people 15 years ago, I watched it, I heard it come out of their mouth. Well, I guess I'll just get what my parents had, and when I get that age, I'll, I'll have the same diseases. And, the, and to this day, they've got the very same diseases. Okay, they spoke it, they received it, they believed it, and they got it. Now, how are you going to use your tongue? For blessing or for cursing? You're going to use it for life or you're going to use it for death. The most powerful organ in your body is 
your tongue. How are you going to use it today? Use it to call down heaven into your life and watch what God will do for you and how your life will change. This is Jeff Beavers with The Voice 5 Ministry saying God bless you and we will see you next week.